What screams, I am upper class. A wealthy couple I know has twin Steinway concert grand pianos in the ballroom-sized living room. Neither of them plays a note on these elegant pianos that are worth about $185,000 each Steinway model D9 feet, so they hire me to play for special occasions. In the interim, the two grands just sit there as part of the room's decor. Knew a rich kid in college. Rumor has it. Dude ended up owing hundreds of thousands of dollars to bookies for betting on NBA games. For that amount of money, the syndicates financing the bookies in my country go after you and your family to make sure you pay. Night before payday, dude went to his parents allegedly crying, telling them he had a problem. Parents were obviously concerned. Dude told them what happened and parents breathed a sigh of relief. They thought he got a chick pregnant. They gave him the money to pay the bookie, relieved. Live in Maid, or their teenage kid has their own new sports car at 16. Being enormously more concerned about how long something will take to get done, rather than how much it will cost. Not knowing what ordinary things cost, like a banana or pair of socks. It's one banana, Michael, what could it cost? $10 frequency of travels. I work around a ton of upper class people and many of them travel so much they are practically locals at some restaurants. They also focus on lesser known, yet elaborate spots. Having a nanny 100%. Taught at a dance school in a wealthier area, not only did all the kids attend a private school but their nannies would be the ones dropping them off. Being that I am not upper class my first few weeks I was pretty confused as to why so many white children seemed to be adopted by Asians. Then when I finally met the parents of one of my students I realized they were all Vietnamese nannies. Two stoves side by side in a modern spacious well-lit kitchen generously equipped with up-to-date cooking tools and appliances. My friend's parents have a lot of money and I went to a Halloween party that his family friends were having a couple years ago. I distinctively remember hearing the following two sentences both travel related. One we only have five trips booked next year so we're going to try to sneak in a little visit to Egypt in April. Two yeah, we were just offered another expenses paid trip to St. Lucia but we turned it down. It just gets boring when you've been so many times. To the second one. I said I had to downgrade to one ply toilet paper this month. Can I have the trip? They all laughed at my quaintness. My mom tells this story of being over at a family's house where their dad had once been my dad's boss. It was the early 90s and the wife was opening Christmas cards. As she opened one a check fell onto the floor. She picked it up and said hum. John will be pleased and put it on the fridge. It was for $20,000. I once kicked it with a super rich dude for a few days and it was amazing. I'm talking damn near billionaire rich. Average people don't think about it. But imagine if you were free of all stress regarding work, bills, rent, car maintenance and etc. This dude was the epitome of carefree. That's what really impressed me about the guy. Every option is always on the table. Anything is possible at any time. You want some steak and lobster? Let me call my assistant. It's 3 a.m. and you want a tattoo. I'll call the concierge. I have a summer home in Aspen CO. You want to go hang out there for a while? Get some skiing in. Or do you want to go to my winter home in Aruba? We can go snorkeling. Going through life with no worries about going to work the next day. Seriously. It must be so fantastically liberating. After four days I had to go back to my workaday life. And it was just as hard as coming down off a serious drug. I taught swim lessons at a pretty expensive summer camp, where parents paid upwards of $200 per day for kids, and around $350 per day for tweens. Swimming, hiking, paddle boards, rock climbing, horses, etc. Nothing too special these kids couldn't find at another camp. Lots of celebrity kiddos though. I would charge $50 per hour to guard private pool parties because I didn't want to work weekends and didn't really like guarding as much as I loved teaching. But these parents didn't care. I once made $400 in an afternoon guarding a pool that nobody swam in and $100 tip because the dad felt sorry for wasting my time. $500 to eat catered coggy Korean 
barbecue truck food and chat about cars for a few hours. No complaints. It felt like I was just on display for the parents to show that they could afford a guard. I miss it sometimes. I was dumb with the money and didn't save much. But enough for some tattoos, a flat screen, and to put 35% down on my first car. Passive income. Can you imagine having so much money it makes more for you? As if it's a living thing that f and then you have little baby dollars adding to your wealth. All you have to do is not give all of it away. One time I was talking to a person I work with who I knew already to be wealthy. She let drop that she had a person she was paying to take care of her family's money, and that she was paying this person an amount which happened to be more than I make in a year. And I make kind of a good amount of money. I thought that was quite a flex. You can stay at our holiday house. It's nothing really. Summer is a verb. Why don't you just buy the higher quality but more expensive brand? A trophy wife, husband that is far younger and more attractive than you. UK I had a mate tell me a story about a rich girl at her uni who had never been in a Spoons or Primark. Always travelled down to London to get her hair done which would cost £400. Her and her siblings all had a trust fund and didn't have to work. I don't know one person who's never been in a Weatherspoons. So I was more shocked to hear about that than the £400 expenses at the hairdressers. People who wear their great-grandfather's boots because the quality is still good and they don't give a damn what anyone else thinks. Two phrases. Get both and second-hand yacht. My boyfriend's family was entertainment rich not billionaires but Beverly Hills homeowners and it shows with his decision making. While he is no longer with money and I do our budgeting, I have to constantly break it to him why getting both is not an option anymore. Though he did say this to me on our first date when I couldn't decide between which pie to get for dessert, he paid for dinner and both pieces of pie that I couldn't finish and didn't comment on the waste. My ex-boyfriend was British upper middle class went to public school and spoke with an RP accent. He told me his dad bought a second-hand yacht. In comparison, I grew up in a trailer court in rural Idaho. It's been a strange ride. And when I want to drive the point home to my current boyfriend about how poor I was growing up, I ask, how many flavors of hamburger helper can you name? The answer is always, there was more than one. People who treat fines as payments. Let's just park on the street. It's only $150. No, we can't park on the street. That's how much a ticket costs. Okay, but let's just do that. I don't want to walk. Punishable by fine just means legal for rich people. Online friend of mine was bullied at his private school because his family's butler was a POC, like WTF. Calling themselves upper middle class and always trying to relate with middle class people. I understand working for a living. I worked summers at Father's Hedge Fund. People who instantly recognize my grandpa's 1970s Partek Philippe watch. My stepdad flexes a little, drives a Lexus, owns a boat, has an expensive condo, buys mom nice things, wears a lot of Brooks Brothers, has a beach house, etc. I knew he was well off but when he came to me and offered to pay help us buy a house by fronting the full cost of the new house until we were able to sell our current house. He also told me to never worry about my kid's college education and that the money is there for us if we need it. That told me that he has wealth. Not a billionaire. Maybe has a couple million in savings plus a couple million more in assets. He also told me to never worry about my kid's college education and that the money is there for us if we need it. You know what? All the other flexing aside, this bit is awfully nice. My eldest is going to be college age in five years and this is a particular worry of mine. Not looking at price tags. I do this at the dollar store. You want that? Sure. Why not? Throw it in the cart. It's great fun. I feel like a rich person for 20 minutes. When you use vacation as a verb, as in, we vacation in St. Baths every winter. PFFT, mere upper middle class, at best. People who matter use the seasons as a verb, of course. We summer at the Cape and winter in Aspen. And if you have to ask which Cape, you're not fit to open the grey poupon. Children with their own credit cards. Just buy another one. Shopping at Waitrose. 
I do a lot of cable and fiber optic work in an extremely affluent neighborhood in the FL Panhandle, called Alice Beach. I'm talking gross excess when it comes to these houses, but the look on their face when I call their multi-million dollar villa a townhouse, is priceless. The same thing as being lower class, having many children. The slight difference, upper class, having a live-in nanny and maid to take care of the more unpleasant parts of the parenting job, lower class, having a live-in nanny and maid the oldest children to take care of the more unpleasant parts of the parenting job. Last year I vacationed at my great uncle's estate. He owns the company I work for. The week I was there I learned a lot about super rich people. His neighborhood had criteria to move in. Besides being able to afford a multi-million dollar house, you had to own your own private airplane and a license. The neighborhood had its own private airstrip and gas station for planes. Everyone owned $4,000 plus golf carts. His neighbor would fly his plane around for an hour or so every day. They paint their houses seasonally. A lot of the residents own a horse at the nearby club. Cops pull you over if you drive a bad car in that neighborhood. I told my uncle I was going to a bar. He told me to take the 2018 Lexus. I said, oh well I'm gonna be drinking so I'll get an Uber. His response, well okay if you say so, it's just a car. The next day, he complained about a $10 pizza being a waste of money. The capital gains tax becomes something you notice. I had a co-worker whose dad was very wealthy. He was about 16 and so was I and we were both working summer jobs. One day I mentioned that I was thinking about buying a gaming console and was debating on a PS4 or Xbox. He nonchalantly says you can borrow one of my PS4 to see if you like it. I laughed and said what do you mean one of yours? He says yeah we have one in the living room, one in my room and my brother's room and one in the movie room. Weeks later he invited me to his house and turns out the movie room was a full on 9 seat theater. He had no idea how wealthy his family was. He would make comments about money and stuff his parents bought him, like a brand new car as soon as he got his driver's license. But he always said it nonchalantly. If you didn't know him you would think he was just bragging but he honestly wasn't he was just oblivious to the middle class and lower class around him. I went to a boarding school on full scholarship because I'm smart. My family is poor. A lot of my classmates were from filthy rich families. One kid kept getting in trouble and the school was going to kick him out. His parents show up and make a big fat donation to the school, and the school decided to let him stay. Some people's moms had actual names like Trixie and Pixie. Some people owned vacation homes in like the south of France or Spain. Parents would show up for a visit in a limousine and the driver had to stand motionless beside the car while waiting for them. Wearing a monocle. Polo shirt with sweater tied around the neck. Personal security for your family, the people you associate with, subtle mannerisms and speech inflictions, how you dress not what you think, particular scents, what times of the day you see them, particular scents, yes, it's honestly more that certain scents make someone seem low class, cheap perfume that you recognize as the kind we wore in middle school, dollar store hairspray, gel, Perfumes or cologne that are way too strong, etc. I know this guy who really wants to make himself look like he's extremely classy, upper class. But he isn't. Money-wise, he grew up lower middle class. And now, he does all right money-wise. But he doesn't have the attitude. His clothes look nice and are always clean and pressed. But he buys brands like Abercrombie that he thinks look really good and expensive. And if he was 14 they would. But he's 25. It's like when a girl buys a cheap looking coach purse just because it's designer. Not recognizing that all designer brands are not created equal. And she would have been better off buying a nice looking purse that isn't brand name. The same guy also wears way too much cologne. And again, it's Abercrombie brand. Or Old Spice body spray. Things like that. He also does things that he's heard of, like holding up his pinky really obviously when he drinks something, that just make him look dumb and don't actually portray a high class person. I read this study once that said people of lower socioeconomic class prefer stronger scents in detergents because they associate strong scent with cleanliness. 
Have you smelled the cleaners at the Dollar Tree or the cheap detergent at Aldi? Go to Whole Foods and take a whiff of the $13 bottle of all-natural detergent with essential oils. Ever since I read that study it has completely changed my perspective on scents and class. Money talks. Wealth whispers. My dad invented toaster strudel. When tuna doesn't come from a can. I must be upper class because mine comes from a plastic pouch. Being on Jeffrey Epstein's flight logs. Honestly I don't know. I do security for upper class neighborhoods and condos and it's the upper middle class people that absolutely do the crazy things for status. There was a guy who didn't have a barcode. So he came through the visitor's lane every day. He had a messy car, greasy hair, wore holy t-shirts. He was the nicest guy, but he did seem out of place. One day he was upset people were talking shit about him and I let him vent and he appreciated that. He came in the next day so happy and was like remember that bitch I was talking about yesterday. Well L, I bought her business. Who's laughing now? So he was I can buy your business out of pettiness rich. Which is what I aspire to be. Your hobby is dressage. Crashing a Tesla and having your mom buy you a new one a week later. Having a family legacy. The upper class hasn't all that much to do with money. Plenty of upper classmen are borderline broke. Living in old manors with leaky roofs they can't afford to repair. It's a matter of blood and history. Even the wealthiest of the people who lack noble blood and family legacy are typically considered upper middle class. No student loans for grad school med law business. Having a $15 million home in the mountains of a ski town. But it's their Christmas house, decorated for Christmas year round. But they only use it for Christmas. Flying first class having your own private jet. 